I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you final exam review. Here I'm going to discuss very important questions where most of the students made a mistake. So truly speaking, I'm trying to share with you what we need to know. Right, so I'm not really telling you all about the chapter, but I'm telling you where you could lose 0.5 marks. If you take care of these questions, you're all set to score 100%. So this review is for functions, a pre-calculus curriculum, which is very important for students in grade 12 and for pre-university. We have eight questions. I'd like you to copy these questions, answer them. You can see first four clearly. Here are the next four questions. Now, let's begin to answer them one by one. Question number one. Provide example of a function which is both even and odd function, right? Both even and odd function. I hope you remember what is even function, what is odd function. Let me tell you, if f of minus x equals to f of x, we say this is even function, right? And if f of minus x is equals to minus of f of x, we say this is odd function, right? We are not talking about degree. We are talking about the function itself. Now the example, there are very few examples which you could give here. The example f of x equals to 0 is both even and odd. Very important to remember. This is where you could lose 0 0.5. Can you sketch this function? Can you sketch the function f of x equals to 0? Is it just a point? No. The domain is all real numbers and y value is 0. So the function will be x-axis. This is your function. f of x equals to 0. It is symmetric about x-axis. I mean y-axis and symmetric about origin. Important. It is both even and odd. So it is symmetric about origin. That makes it odd, right? And y-axis, which makes it even, if you check with the graph. I hope this concept is absolutely clear. So that is what I mean when I say we will review functions. Right, so I hope it makes sense. Question 2. If f of x equals to k over x plus 3 and f inverse of 4 equals to minus 5, find k. So the question is that f of x is equals to k over x plus 3 and f inverse of 4 is minus 5 we need to find k. Now, I've seen students finding inverse and wasting a lot of time in this. In final exam, if you waste two minutes extra, you're going to lose two marks. So let's be very clear. F inverse of 4 is minus 5. That means F of minus 5 is Four. Does it make sense? F inverse of 4 is minus 5. So on the function, F of minus 5 should be 4. Right? This is important to think about. Once you understand this, it's a simple job. Substitute X as minus 5 and F of X as 4. Find K. Got it? So I'll substitute this, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that 
If x is minus 5, then f of x is 4. That is to say, 4 equals to k over minus 5 plus 3. Do you get it? So, so 4 times minus 5 plus 3 is minus 2 should be equal to k and clearly k is equal to minus 8. So our answer is k equals to minus 8. Is that clear? Alright, let's move on and take up the next question. I hope you are enjoying this process. Question 3. Discuss the continuity of the following piecewise function. Now let me remind you that piecewise functions are the functions where in different intervals we have different kind of a graph. Right. So there are in this particular case three pieces joined together at intervals from minus infinity to minus one. So so at minus one there is a break, let us say right. Then at two there is a break. So we have different kinds of functions. From minus infinity to minus one, the function is a parabola. X squared plus three x plus four. Right. So so in this portion I mean this portion, we have this quadratic function, right? And then in the middle part, we have a linear function, 3x plus 2. So, so in this portion, we have the function 3x plus 2. And beyond 2, we have a constant function 8. That means beyond this, equal to 2 also, we'll fill this up and just go straight. Do you see that? So this point happens to be at 8. So that is how the function is. To sketch this function, you need to know few points and you can really sketch it. So this part is clear, the linear between minus 1 and 2. Now, if I substitute minus 1 here, minus 3 plus 2 gives me minus 1. So at minus 1, it is minus 1. Let's say, let's say this point. Not included. I'm putting a hole, right? So let's say this is minus 1. And if I substitute 2, 3 times 2, 6, 6 plus 2 is 8. So, so it really gets connected with this portion. Do you see that part? So it is continuous here. Here it is continuous. Do you see that part? But... If I substitute, let's talk about this point, minus 1. In the first equation, what do I get? Now, what is f of, let's calculate. What is f of minus 1 equals to? Then definitely we are looking into this equation, the quadratic equation. So we'll have minus 1 whole square plus 3 times minus 1 plus 4, which is? 1 minus 3 plus 4 and that gives you 5 minus 3 as 2. So at f of minus 1 the value is 2. Minus 1 is included. So you can see that there is a jump discontinuity. Do you see that jump discontinuity? Perfect. So it is discontinuous at x equals to minus 1. So at minus 1 it is discontinuous, at 2 it is continuous. So you can write down your answer as function f of x is discontinuous at x equals to minus 1, right? It is continuous. elsewhere everywhere else is it okay so that is how you could explain it now as a part what you should do is this is a parabola moving upwards I would like you to sketch function f of x is it okay so let this be an exercise for you take few more points check the values for f of minus 2 
let's say f of minus 3 and then you get some more points right sketch it so let's move on take up question number four now now this is a huge question find inverse of the function f of x equals 2 1 minus square root of 2 minus x first thing which you should do is really rearrange so we are used to looking at this function as the translation vertical comes at the end right also the inside part we have to factor out the coefficient of x should be 1 so we have to factor out this negative and what we get here is square root of x minus 2 plus 1 do you get it now this is the first part which many students miss and they normally get it wrong and therefore the whole transformation and everything is wrong okay now what you should also do is uh, sketch this function write its domain range so I have not put this as a part of uh, this because most of you can do it so for you extra sketch write domain and range as a part of review right okay now <clears throat> I'll give you a rough idea about it so we're talking about a square root function which is kind of like this minus means what minus means that it is getting reflected on the y-axis so it, this is how it will be and this minus 2 means that it moves two units here like this so this is your function let's say 1 this is 2 this is third point right and then plus 1 really means and this is negative here also okay so this negative here means it gets reflected like this okay and plus 1 finally means that you got to move up right one unit and then your graph is kind of like this so that's your function and from the function you can say that the domain is x is less than equal to 2 right this point is 2 and this point is 1 as far as the range is concerned range you can say y is less than or equal to 1 is that clear now this is a very very important part now once you understand then how will domain and range change for inverse function f inverse x how will it change it will swap so once it swaps the domain of your inverse function will become this that is to say x is less than equal to 1 and the range will be that they swap less than equal to 2 this is very important so when you write down your answer the inverse function you have to mention this or check if you don't do that you're going to get wrong answer right so that is a common mistake so the whole idea here in my video on review of functions is not to talk about what is function what is the relation and all that we really want to understand what we missed on now let's catch that and score 100 percent marks okay so let's follow the method now we say y equals to minus of all this will swap to find inverse so let's find inverse now let's say inverse function so all this should be done before you start working on inverse function so we'll swap we'll write x equals to minus square root of minus uh, y minus 2 plus 1 so so this comes on the left side so x minus 1 divide by minus that means divide by minus 1 equals to square root of minus y minus 2 is it okay uh, so let me bring it to the right side so now we'll open the bracket with squaring 
correct so so when you square this becomes actually positive so but I'll keep like this for the time being I hope that will make sense equals to minus y minus I mean within bracket y minus 2 okay so I'll bring this y minus 2 on the left side so I get y minus 2 equals this is negative here therefore do you understand and uh, the whole portion comes here as negative uh, x minus 1 uh, okay minus 1 whole square okay now I'll bring this 2 on that side strictly speaking uh, okay let's do that so we have y equals to 2 minus x minus 1 over minus 1 whole square okay now whatever you actually get a function which is kind of a parabola do you get it now it is very important to understand that let me rewrite this first okay let me rewrite this so I could rewrite this as y equals to you prefer to write minus outside let me take care of this okay so uh, well, when you square, this becomes positive. Do you get my point, right? So I could write this as x minus 1 whole square also. Square of negative is this, right? And plus 2. So that is the function I've got. Now here, is it the right answer? Is it the right answer? You could see that the function opens downwards from 2. So the range part is correct, right? So this part is correct. Because vertex is at 1, 2, right? So the vertex is at 1, 2, and it opens down. So, so the range is correct. Opens down because of this minus. But now tell me, how about the domain part? What about the domain? Is that correct? What about this domain? We have to mention that x should be less than or equal to 1. Only then this becomes inverse function. Right? That was the whole idea. So we'll write f inverse of x is equal to minus x minus 1 whole square plus 2, where x is less than or equal to 1. Now you have the correct answer. Now you have the correct answer. Do you see that part? If you do not write x less than or equal to 1, your answer is incorrect. And in final exam, you're not going to get marks for it. So I hope that is clear, right? Now based on piecewise functions, we have a word problem. Question number 5. A parking garage charges $1.10 for up to 2 hours. So, and dollar four for each subsequent hour. Write a piecewise function for the given situation, right? So, let's say charges, cost of parking with time. That is your function. So, we have two pieces. Up to two hours, it charges flat rate of $10. This is when of course from 0 to less than equal to 2 hours correct for subsequent hours that means when time is greater than 2 then it charges four dollars per hour do you understand so how will you write equation for that part dollar four for each hour beyond two hours do you see that so that means the time should be time should be more than two hours then every extra hour will be paid by four dollars but for the first two hours you have to pay ten dollars do you get it so you have to have this ten here 
and that is for every extra hour. This happens when time is greater than 2. Is that clear? So that is how the function is going to be. So as an exercise, what we will also do is kind of sketch it. Hmm? Okay, so, so you could say like this. So the graph is going to be in quadrant 1, first part is very clear, which is for 2 hours you just pay a flat rate of $10. Now so this is at 2. After 2 hours what? So, so after 2 hours, whatever time is, let's say it's kind of continuous and we are in a position to like half an hour you pay $2, $2 right? So, so after two hours, let's say three hours, let's say three, I mean three will be here, okay, let this be four, okay, so three will be, three minus two is one, so you get 14, right, so this is 10, so it's kind of 14, four, so it is kind of like this. So at three hours, you pay 14, this was 10, do you see the function? Now the question is also, is the function continuous? Is the function continuous? Now, some of you may make a flat type of a thing, make it discontinuous. The question is, is it continuous? The answer is yes, correct. With time, you can even if you spend 2 hours and 10 minutes, you know what to pay. So it's a function. You know specifically what to pay. For any time, the vehicle is parked. Okay, so that makes sense. So it is a continuous function. That is how it should be. Let's move on. Question number 6. 1, 2 is a point on the graph of function f of x. So we have a point P, let's say, 1, 2. This is on the function uh, f of x. Find the corresponding point on the function. So we change the function. So y equals to 3f and uh, we have here 5 minus x minus 1. We have to find this point on that graph. Okay. First step, rewrite this. You get 3 function. We'll take minus common factor x minus 5. Does it make sense? This is very important. Once you do that, then you know the transformation that the coordinates of x and y will be transformed. The x values will become negative and plus 5. So we'll write like this, negative x plus 5. This is how the x values will change. Y values will get multiplied by 3 and take away 1. Do you see that? So that becomes a new coordinate. So we start with 1, 2. So it gets to minus 1 plus 5 is the x value. 3 times 2 minus 1 is the y value. Correct? So what do we get here? We get 4, 6 minus 1 as 5. That becomes the answer. Okay? So that becomes the answer. Of the image of this point P, let me write P dash. Is that clear? So we're halfway through. Let's take question number 7 which is express the double inequality minus 3 <coughs> x is greater than minus 3 and less than 7 as an absolute function so we have to write this as an absolute function now this is a huge question I've seen 90 percent students making mistake here so think about it like this so it's kind of a number line here we are saying that the value of x is in between 2 let's say this where this point is minus 3 this is 7 we have to write this interval as an absolute function how do you do that right you remember recall now let's do it the steps to do it are like this. Let me write down the steps. 
First step, find midpoint. So let's call that point as M. So we say M is, add them divide by 2. So minus 3 plus 7 divide by 2, which is 4 over 2, which is 2. So the midpoint here is 2. Right? Second step. This is our step number 1. Second. Second step is, how far are the ends from midpoint? Do you understand? So we have to find this distance and this distance. Of course, they are equal, right? So you could find this as... 7 minus 2 is 5, correct? And you'll know 2 minus minus 3 is also 5. How far? And third thing which you have to think about is, so this is step 1, this is step 2. Next step, okay? And third step is your final answer. What are you looking for? Is it within or is it away? Now it is within. So in this case, we know it is within. Within these two, that means less than, right? So within means less than. Away means greater than. Do you get an idea? Okay. So that helps you to give you the function. So you move to point two. So absolute x, you have moved to two. Okay. So here somewhere here we have origin. Right. Let me let me just sketch y axis here. Kind of. Was that okay? So. So we have absolute x move to 2 and this value should be less than 5. So you are within the interval of 5 and that is what you get. So the absolute function x minus 2 should be less than 5 to represent the given double inequality. Is that clear? So find the midpoint and check how far you are from the midpoint if you are within, it is less than. If it was outside, then greater than. Do you understand? Then greater than. What I'm trying to say here is this. If you have a situation where we say this, for example, let me give you another example. Let's say this is 2, this is, this is, uh, this is 6. Now the midpoint here is 2 plus 6 is 8 divided by 2 is 4. And you are two units, but you have to move away, right? So that means you're moving to four. So you write absolute x minus four greater than two units away by two units. Do you get it? So that is how you will do a question for away. I hope this is clear. This is what some of my students still have to know. So I hope that makes sense. Let's move on. We are almost at the end. In fact, this is the last question. Question 8. If f of x equals to 3x minus 2, g of x is 2x minus 3, determine f of g of 1, g of f, f of f of f inverse, and g inverse of f. So composition of functions. Last unit. Let's see how to do it. It is a very important unit. Even if it is not covered at school, you should be in a position to do. It is expected. So we are given f of x as 3x minus 2, g of x as 2x minus 3. We have to find what is f of g of 1 equal to. Start from inside part. Okay. So that means f of g of 1 g is 2x minus 1. Substitute 1 here. So what do we get? We get 2 times 1 minus 3, which is f of 2 minus 3 is minus 1. Now once you get this minus 1, substitute minus 1 in this function. So what we get here is 3 times minus 1 minus 2, which is equal to minus 5. Is that clear? So that is the solution for the first one.
clear now let's do part b which is g of f so when i say g of f it's kind of like this g of write down the function f of x which is 3x minus 2 the function g of x is 2x minus 3 substitute x with all this so we get 2 times 3x minus 2 minus 3 correct now open the bracket 6x minus 4 minus 3 which gives you 6x minus 7 so so the answer is g of f is equal to 6x minus 7 perfect Now let's do f of f inverse. So of course you have to find f inverse first. So what is f inverse of x? Now you could do it by reading out, right? I'll use the wo words. 3 times x take away 2. So we do reverse reading or operation. for inverse normally you'll swap x and y calculate y correct we'll do reverse 3 times x minus 2 so reverse is add 2 so to x add 2 and then divide by 3 that is how you get inverse also so some students need to learn this method okay it's a good idea to introduce now so f of f inverse is what? So f of, we got all this, right? We'll write x plus 2 over 3. So we'll put this value back into f of x. So what we get is 3 times x plus 2 over 3. And then we have minus 2. Now 3 and 3 cancel. So we get x plus 2 minus 2. And we get x. Are you surprised? That is the answer which you should be expecting. Correct? So we know that always f of f inverse will be equal to x. Important to remember. Is that clear? Right? No doubt about it. So that is an important conclusion. Now let's look into the last part. That's the end of this video. So what we have now is g inverse of f. So we want to do g inverse of f, which is, uh, so, so what we can do is, we can find first g inverse, right, we could do that, but we want to find g inverse of f, f is 3x minus 2. So that's what it means. So in this particular case, since we know g of x, we should first find what g inverse of x is. So from here, let me do it in a different ink. We know g of x is equals to 2x minus 3. So g inverse of x will be reverse operation, right? So x plus 3 divided by 2. Is that okay? x plus 3 divided by 2. So that is g inverse of x. Now we want to find g inverse of 3x minus 2 got an idea right so we'll replace this here 3x minus 2 will replace this x is it okay so what we are writing this as let me rewrite this half of x plus 3 now this is better right so we could write this as equal to 3 times x for x so we get half of instead of x i'm writing 3x minus 2 and I already have plus 3 here. Does it make sense? So it is half of 3x plus 1. So that is g inverse of f. You get it? Half of 3x plus 1. Which you could also write as 3 by 2x plus half. So that is the final answer. So I hope you enjoyed this journey of Final review, pre-functions, pre-calculus on functions. The idea was to take a few questions which will help you to score better marks. These are the questions which I thought need some more emphasis. I've seen a lot of students making mistakes in these questions. I wish you all the best. 
go through this video once again and similarly I have six parts to this advanced functions and functions MHF4U and IB level math course in which I will discuss such questions feel free to post your own questions and if you like and subscribe my videos that'd be great thanks for watching and all the best